The following program is brought to you by the Center for Educational Outreach at Baylor College of Medicine. Michael Vu. And I'm Barbara Tharp. And we're from Baylor College of Medicine Center for Educational Outreach. We're here to talk about science safety in the elementary classroom. We will be watching and commenting on a presentation conducted with a group of teachers. Um, you know what they say about safety, right? Safety first. So we're going to go first, although I wanted to be second. Um, and this is a really exciting topic. I can see the look on your faces that you're really, really excited about doing this. Safety really is uh, one of the core principles for HISD, so you, we always want to kind of go back to that, right? So what I want to do is kind of talk quickly about safety, and I want to sh um, show you a picture. Actually, nope, I, gotta, I want to start off with, uh, this is something that I just added. I want to see how well we know a couple of these, these um, terms, okay? So does anyone know what this is? No one, no one. Count backwards? I said cat backwards. Cat backwards. I'll sneaky. No, 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 no. It actually does stand for something. It stands for the Texas Administrative Code. Does anyone know what that is? Okay. I have a couple of nods. So the Texas Administrative Code is the is the list of all the rules, the standards, the regulations in the state of Texas that basically govern everything, right? All the laws and the books, okay? Um, and so if you go online, if you go search TAC, there's a whole list from, the, from the, the, the state office. There's laws about transportation. There's laws about health and safety. There's laws about all kinds of stuff. Well, there's a TAC for education and, and elementary science safety as well. So what the whole point is all of the safety things that we talk about are governed by state laws, okay? So just make that clear, okay? So. How about this? Some of you should recognize this. Yes. Material safety data sheet. All right, so who does not know what this is? Raise your hand, just to get an idea. So a handful of people, okay, they don't know what that is, so that's important um, because I'll go back to that TAC thing a little bit because it does involve the law. How about, let me move this little box, this. Anzi's Z87.1. Uh, Never heard of it. Okay, goes back to that law again, but I will get to this in a second. All right, so there's a couple of things that we, we don't know. Safety is the first science objective for every elementary grade level. We want you to, to follow your school and district guidelines first and foremost. And safety practices should happen before, during, and after classroom and field investigations. Now, every investigation conducted during the school year requires some sort of safety consideration. Now that we've emphasized the safety not only important, it's a law. We want to talk about how to go about addressing safety in the classroom, Michael. And one way I've introduced safety is to show them a picture of things that are um, unsafe and safe in the science lab and ask them to find things that are unsafe. If you don't have a picture, you could engage your students by asking them to brainstorm possible safety hazards in their own classroom. So let's look at how I use this activity with a group of teachers as a focus lesson. Okay, and so what I wanted to do just as a focus is you're going to get a sheet that's passed around. You don't have to write on it. Um, if you want to save it for your personal use, you're more than welcome to. Um, if you have scrap paper, you might want to use that. But what I'm going to ask you guys to do in a little bit is work you know, with the people around you. And I want you to do this, OK? So you're going to work together to list any potential safety hazard on that sheet, OK? And you have five minutes to do that. And after that, we're going to kind of see what we come up with, OK? Thank you. Fire hose. You just said the girl, the girl queen. Here we go. So um, just to kind of make it move a little faster, I just kind of 
cut and pasted a little bit of the images on here, but look at the first one. Which one, what, what safety hazard is that? Teacher are talking, no supervision, they're drinking in the lab on top of it, right? And I have to say, I'm a little bit guilty of that occasionally. Um, and her shoes are untied. <laughs> or they're tied together, so I wonder who did that. <laughs> um, Number two, I put in because it, this is based on like a like a real experience that I had. We were working with with uh, unknown substances, and I told the kids, "Don't taste, touch, eat anything." And then I turn around, and what do I see? I see a girl licking it, licking this white thing. It wasn't dangerous, but you know, I mean, it's just one of those things that um, that happens. Um, number three is probably less common because I bet you a lot of you have gotten rid of your. You, you're missing a strap. I, I, I got rid of my TV pretty, pretty quickly after I realized it was a big bulky thing, but um, some of you might have that. Um, and number seven, I used to post little signs around my room, um, around the electronics, and it would have a, you know, no magnet signs because even though it's not hazardous to, to a person, it's still considered, you know, a safety issue. So there's nine things here. Um, and then, Let's see, anything that stands out. Um, 15, my favorite. This was, this was the bane of, my, of our lab. We had stools, and the rule was you always had to keep your stools pushed in. And I don't know how many times kids would leave them out and you would trip over them, I mean, constantly. So that was always a big issue for us. And if you have um, animals in your classroom, there was always uh, the, the potential for number 12, where you had kids, you know, they always want to get into that stuff. Michael, do you have anything else you want to share with the teachers? How, how do your students respond to this activity? Well, I could always refer to this activity um, later in the year when we were doing another activity. And I would say, do you remember this picture at the beginning of the year? And the kids would remember and say, are, are these safe or unsafe practices? Okay. And um, it was a good way for, to remind them. Right. Well, let's look at another way you can help students learn about safety using posters. All right. All right, so one of the natural progressions is something you guys probably already do. You have the kids create their own safety rules, right, so that they have some sort of ownership, which is a really common thing that everyone does. So I just threw that in there. But I wanted to add adult behaviors because it's something that you want to kind of encourage that it's not just about them, it's about you as well, okay? So remember that a science rule has to be pretty explicit, okay? can't be just be careful. It can't be something that vague. So we want to make sure that they understand what's going on. And I want to have just reduce everything to three things. So safety involves um, instruction, okay? It, it involves basically how you develop the lesson. It involves supervision, so it deals with how you monitor the activity. And it involves the, the equipment that you use, okay? So if you, ha you use unsafe equipment, then you have problems. And I had... Um, those thermometers, those real flimsy plastic ones with the glass bulbs. We eventually, early on when I started teaching, I, I didn't think much about it, but I realized those things broke very easily and we moved to those metal ones. So, I mean, that's the kind of thing you have to think about as you go. So, it's, so three things, instruction, um, supervision, and then the materials, the maintenance that you have, okay? So Michael, what makes safety equipment different from regular classroom equipment? Well, safety equipment is for personal protection only. Oh. Well, you need to know in advance what safety equipment to use in a given situation and how the equipment should be used. So there are, there's a variety of safety equipment that we can cover, um, but the best place to refer to is the Horizontal Alignment Planning Guide, or the HAPCHI, and that's going to tell you exactly what you need per grade level for your classroom. Um, the there are standard items like a first aid kit, fire extinguisher, fire blanket that you should have in the classroom. And there are some other items, for example, safety gloves. And safety gloves, um, they aren't specified exactly what they should be, but they could be gardening gloves if you're going to be doing something outdoors. Or indoors if you're handling a, 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 a substance like a chemical, you could use um, one of these, these gloves. Gloves come in, in different types. There are uh, latex gloves made um, out of, of, uh, of rubber. and they could be powder free or, or they may have powder in them. But because of allergies, there are other gloves in the market. There are nitrile gloves, a synthetic rubber, and um, vinyl gloves, which is made of a plastic. So these are other options that you could have um, when working with students. Another tool that you could have or another equipment you could have is an apron. And we recommend that you have a plastic or rubber apron. Canvas um, aprons could absorb 
different types of liquids. So these are a couple more. And we're going to look at um, goggles and um, safety data sheets in a little bit more detail. All right, so safety goggles, since this is a required thing, remember that on Z87.1, Z well, um, they're actually guidelines for the goggles that you have to have in your classroom. Okay, so there's a standard that we follow, and it's set by this American Standard uh, National Standards Institute. Um, they they create the bar for what's acceptable and for safe use. Um, think of them kind of like OSHA, right? The Occupational Health People. So they um, dictate a certain type of standard for these goggles. So if you use goggles, they're only in compliance if they have that number stamped on them. Okay, um, so. Question, does this meet the standard? No, why not? Right, these are not, these are not safety goggles, they're, they're safety glasses, right? These are impact glasses only, and they only provide protection against flying objects, right? Things that'll kind of hit you in the eye, but they don't protect you against splashes, because as we know, if it splashes in your face, it runs down, right? So, this, so there's no protection above or below or on the sides. So if you're using this as your safety goggle, then um, reconsider it, okay? But chemicals in the classroom, okay? So back to this real quick. Um, there should be, if you don't have your MSDS sheets, there should be one place where you can find them. Does anyone know? The nurse. The nurse keeps a big red book with all of these sheets in it. And um, I don't know if you know when the, the nurse asks you to do that, that chemical um, survey and you have to write out everything that you use. Well, why does she do that? Because she has to have, make sure she has an MSDS for everything. So your job is to make sure you find anything you use, you know, that, for example, that's beyond normal use. You might want to go and copy that sheet from that book and have it just in place. Now that we've learned about safety equipment, let's discuss some other strategies you could use to make safety part of your classroom culture. So one other um, strategy that you, could that you could employ is use a safety object wall. The object wall could be on a, a bulletin board, it could be a poster board, using images or real objects of safety equipment. Label those things and have students talk about what their uses are for. And you can always refer to them throughout the year during a different um, investigations. Great idea. Another way, another thing that's really important, I think, is safety contracts. Uh, safety contracts should be created, should be sent home with the parents, and hopefully you can get it back and keep it filed. Another tool you could use is a safety science notebook. The notebook um, could you be used by dedicating a section of it for safety alone, or within every activity or lesson that you do, the students can write down the safety procedures that they follow. Other safety resources that you might want to consider. One of the most important is Safety in the Elementary Science Classroom flip chart. It's available from the National Science Teachers Association. We have the website listed for you at www.nsta.org. Another uh, resource that you can have is a Texas Safety Standards Kindergarten through Grade 12 Science um, book. And it's available through UT um, at, at utdanacenter.org. And this book actually has uh, many of the laws and some of the requirements for, for elementary safety. We hope you can take away ideas to incorporate into your re repertoire of activities. Remember, safety first, but it's always part of everything that we do.